All right, get ready, because on today's deep dive, we're going deep into baseball Eight. to talk about Shohei Otani. Oh, yeah. The Dodger superstar and his wild 2024 season. It has been wild. For anyone out there who might not know, Otani is making history as a two-way player. Huh. And I don't mean just dabbling in pitching and hitting, but dominating at both. Exactly. What's the mission for this deep dive? Well, we've got articles chronicling Otani's whole season, his injuries, his MVP candidacy, okay. and what it all means for the future of baseball. Lots to cover. But... The big question is this, can Otani keep defying the odds and stay a two-way threat despite some serious injuries? That's the big one. What do you think? Well, it's fascinating because Otani is rewriting the rule book yeah. on what's possible in baseball. Right. We've had guys try to do both pitching and hitting before, sure, uh -huh. but no one, and I mean, no one has done it with Otani's level of success. Right. He's not just breaking records, he's shattering expectations about how the game is played. It really is like watching a superhero movie come to life yeah, yeah. right there on the field. Yeah. So let's break this down. Okay. Otani starts 2024 on fire, and then bam, August hits, and he tears his UCL. Oh, no. His second Tommy John surgery. Wow. Which is huge for any pitcher, but for someone with Otani's pitching mechanics, yeah. it could be devastating. Potentially devastating. Help me understand this for listeners who might not know. Sure. What is Tommy John surgery and why is it such a big deal? Well, Tommy John surgery is essentially a reconstruction of the ligament in the elbow that pitchers need to throw with power and accuracy. So they need that ligament. They need that ligament, yeah. Okay. And it's a long recovery, huh. often taking a year or more wow. to even get close to their pre-injury form. Oh, wow. And for Otani, whose pitching style is so explosive right. and high velocity, the risk of re-injury is even greater. So we're talking about a serious blow to his pitching career. Yeah. But here's where it gets really interesting. Otani, being superhuman, decides, well, I can't pitch, but I can sure as heck still hit. And hit he does. And hit he does. MVP caliber hitting, even with this major surgery. Yeah, help me understand this. Okay. How is he crushing home runs while basically recovering from elbow reconstruction? It's incredible, right? Yeah. It's a testament to his work ethic and dedication. Uh-huh. Not to mention raw talent. Okay. Even rehabbing his arm, he's maintained insane strength and conditioning. Wow. And his hitting mechanics are so fundamentally sound that the elbow injury hasn't really hampered his ability to swing. Real. With power. Wow. It's mind-boggling. So the Dodgers are facing a real dilemma here. Yeah, they With this generational talent. Right. But they also need to protect their investment. Uh -huh. They've got to make tough choices about how to manage Otani's workload. Absolutely. And they have decided to shut down his pitching okay. for the rest of 2024, wow. hoping he can return to the mound sometime in 2025. It's a strategy to prioritize his long-term health, but it's a gamble. It is a tough call. It is. You've got a guy who can single-handedly change the course of a game with his arm A and D, his bat. Right. But you can't risk jeopardizing his future. Right. By pushing him too hard too soon. Exactly. Mm. It's about maximizing his impact now mm. while ensuring his longevity. Okay. It's not just about wins and losses. All right. It's about protecting a player who could reshape how we think about baseball. Think about it. He's been sidelined since August, unable to pitch, and he's still a leading contender for MVP. Crazy, right? It is crazy. It he is. could win the MVP as primarily a hitter. Yeah. I mean, his OPS is through the roof, even with the injury. It is. And for listeners who might not know, OPS combines a player's ability to get on base and hit for power. Right. So a high OPS means you're a real offensive threat. You are. And Otani's leading the pack despite only playing half the game. Amazing. So to speak. Yeah, it would be a landmark moment in baseball history. It would. Challenging the traditional view of the MVP, mm -hmm. which is usually given to someone who excels in all aspects of the game. Right, the five-tool player. Exactly. Hit for average, hit for power, run, field, and throw well. Yeah. But Otani's situation highlights the value of specialization. It does. Even in a team sport, uh -huh. showing the world that being exceptionally good at one thing can be just as valuable yeah. as being pretty good at several things. It's an interesting thought. So even though he hasn't pitched since August, that he could pitch right. exceptionally well, uh -huh is still part of the MVP conversation. I think so. His potential is as much a part of the equation yeah. as his actual performance. It really is a fascinating case study. It is. And how we evaluate value in sport. Yeah, does versatility trump specialization? Right. 
Can a player who excels in a limited role still be considered the most valuable? That's the question. These are the questions Otani's season is forcing us to confront. And these questions are relevant for anyone who has to make decisions about talent specialization and strategy. It's true. It's about understanding where to focus your energy, where to invest your resources, and how to maximize your impact even with setbacks and limitations. I like that. Otani's season is like a microcosm of life itself. It is. We all face challenges. We have to adapt and make the most of our talents. Absolutely. That's what makes this deep dive so compelling. Uh Uh-huh. It's not just about baseball. It's about resilience, determination, and defying expectations. You said it. It's about challenging the status quo, pushing boundaries, and inspiring a new generation to dream big. Well said. That's a perfect place to pause for now. Okay. We've covered a lot of ground, but there's still much more to unpack. Looking forward to it. Me too. Welcome back to our deep dive on Shohei Otani. So we've established that Otani season has really challenged how we think about value in baseball. He really has. But his impact goes beyond awards and stats. Yeah. He's got people talking about the future of the game. That's right. Could we see more two-way players in the MLB? That's a question everyone is asking. It's not as simple as just saying, let's have more guys like Otani. No, it's not. What might prevent teams from fully embissing the two-way player? Well, for starters, the risk... Developing a two-way player is a huge investment Uh of time and resources. Right. And there's always the threat of injury. Like we saw with Otani. Exactly. If a player gets hurt, you lose two players instead of one. That's tough for any team. It is, especially when you're talking about top talent. Makes sense from a business standpoint. Yeah. Teams want to minimize risk. Right. And maximize their investment. Exactly. And then there's the issue of coaching and training. Okay. To develop a two-way player, you need coaches who understand both pitching and hitting. So you need specialized coaches. You need specialized coaches. Got it. Who can work with a player on two different skill sets. Wow. Which often have conflicting demands on the body. That's interesting. That expertise is rare. Yeah. And expensive. Sounds like you'd need to overhaul the whole player development system. You would need to make some adjustments for sure. Okay, so let's say a team IS willing to invest the time and resources. Right. What are the benefits? Well, it could change the game completely. How so? Imagine a team with several two-way players. Okay. Seamlessly switching between pitching and hitting. Yeah. You'd have unpredictability and excitement we haven't seen in decades. Like a secret weapon? It would be like a secret weapon. Wow. It would force other teams to constantly adjust. I should see that. Do you bring in a left-handed reliever? Uh-huh. When the batter can also throw 95 miles per hour. That's a good point. Creates so many tactical possibilities. It'd be a dream come true for baseball fans. It would? More action, more strategy, more excitement. It'd be a game changer. And what about the impact on young players? That's a great point. What if they see two-way players succeeding at the highest level? They might be inspired to be more versatile. Exactly. Challenge those traditional notions of specialization. It could lead to a more dynamic approach to player development. Not just in baseball, right. but in all sports. Otani's legacy might not just be about his achievements, mm-hmm. but about how he's changed how we think about talent and potential in sports. It is a fascinating concept. It is. And we'll continue to explore it as Otani's career unfolds. Okay. But let's shift gears and talk about Otani's cultural impact. Right. He's a global icon. He is. A symbol of excellence and perseverance. How do you explain his appeal? Well, Otani's story resonates with people. I agree. He represents triumph over adversity. Uh, He came from a different culture, a different style of baseball. And he's conquered the MLB. He did. With humility, grace, and a crazy work ethic. It's inspiring. It It just has this quiet confidence and determination. He's the ultimate underdog. Yeah. In a world that feels cynical, people are drawn to his authenticity. Okay. His passion and his pursuit of excellence. And don't forget his electrifying style of play. He's so fun to watch. He is. Whether he's hitting home runs or striking out batters. He's a showman. A true entertainer. Brings excitement and energy to the game. And it's contagious. He makes you want to stand up and cheer. No matter who you're rooting for. I think there's also something to be said for his ability to bridge cultures. That's a good point. A Japanese player, beloved in America. Yeah. A symbol of the unifying power of sports. He's broken down barriers. He has. And transcended borders. Yeah. He's shown the world 
that excellence has no borders. And the language of sports is universal. He's a true ambassador for the game. And his impact will be felt for generations. Absolutely. His yeah. story will be told and retold, uh -huh. inspiring young athletes to chase their dreams. Uh -huh. But let's not forget. Yeah. His story is still being written. Right. He's still young. He has so much more to accomplish. Which brings us back to the big question. Okay. Can he maintain this two-way dominance? Right. Or will he have to choose just one path? It's the ultimate dilemma. It is. Only time will tell. But regardless of what happens, yeah. he's left his mark on the game, yes. changed how we think about baseball, yeah. inspired fans, and yeah. shown the world that anything is possible. If you have the talent. Right the dedication and the will to succeed. He's a true original. He is. He's a once in a generation talent. Who has captivated the world. And we are all waiting to see what happens next. We are. I think we've covered a lot in this part of our deep dive. Yeah. We've explored the potential for more two-way players, the yeah. challenges and rewards, uh -huh. and Otani's cultural impact on the game. Absolutely. We've talked about why he's so popular, yeah. the inspiration he provides, uh -huh. and the legacy he's building. On and off the field. Welcome back to the final part of our deep dive into Shohei Otani's 2024 season. It's been quite a journey. It has. Uh, we've talked about his dominance, his impact on the future of baseball, his global stardom. Yeah, a lot to unpack. Otani's story is about so much more than wins and losses. I agree. It's about challenging the norms. Yeah, in the sport and in how we view talent. I've been thinking about that a lot during this deep dive. Okay. It's like... Otani is making us rethink what it means to be valuable Interesting. in any field, not just baseball. Okay. We get so caught up in specialization, mastering one skill right. that we forget about being versatile, uh -huh. adapting and excelling in multiple areas. That's a great point. It's like that saying, jack of all trades, master of none. Right. But Otani flips that on its head. He does. He's a master of T-duo incredibly demanding skills. Two. Could being well-rounded unlock a new level of potential? That's a great question. I think it resonates with our listeners, too. Yeah. A lot of them are probably trying to figure out their own career paths, uh. where to specialize, where to diversify their skills. I see. Otani is a powerful example of how multiple passions can lead to amazing results. He shows us that limitations are often self-imposed. How oh, so? We tell ourselves, I can't do that, or that's not for me. Right. But Otani challenges us to ask... What if I could? What if we embraced our potential more? It's exciting. And a little daunting. It is, but ultimately empowering. And let's not forget the joy Otani brings to the game. He does make it fun. Even with the pressure, the injuries, the scrutiny. Yeah. He plays with fun and enthusiasm. It's infectious. You can see it in his smile, uh -huh. in how he interacts with his teammates. Right. It's a reminder that success isn't just about goals. Okay. It's about enjoying the journey, embracing challenges, and finding joy in the pursuit of excellence. Couldn't have said it better myself. He's a role model for everyone. I think so. Not just athletes, but anyone trying to reach their full potential. I agree. He teaches us to be ambitious, to dream big to defy expectations. And to persevere. Yes, even when facing setbacks. Adapt and keep moving forward. As we wrap up this deep dive on Shohei Otani's 2024 season, right. I want to leave you with this. Okay. What if Otani's greatest impact isn't about records or awards, mm -hmm. but about how he inspires us to rethink our limitations, yeah. to embrace our potential, mm -hmm. and to find joy in pursuing our passions. I like that. What if his story is a call to action? What if it is? A reminder that we can defy the odds, challenge the status quo, and create our own path to success. Powerful stuff. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of Shohei Otani. It's been a pleasure. We hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Me too. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Absolutely. On your own life. Great advice. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. <laughs>